Are you in the market for a new uh, electric skillet? Uh, perhaps it's a Zojirushi Japanese style electric skillet. And if you are, uh, you might want to stay tuned for this video because I'm going to be telling you all about the Zojirushi EP RAC50 electric skillet. So stay tuned. Konnichiwa, Pat Tokuyama here. I'm the creator of the Japanese Cooking Club, where I help people learn how to make plant-based Japanese food. Today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experiences using this Zojirushi electric skillet and a few of the pros and cons, as well as some of my tips for actually using this if you decide to buy it. So first things first, uh, why did I get an electric skillet? Well, there's many reasons, but the main reason is so that I can cook at the table. So one of the benefits of the electric skillet is that you don't need to be at your stove. You can use it wherever you have electricity. That includes in your family room, maybe outside by the pool. Uh, in your bedroom if you feel like cooking up there or anywhere else where there is an electric outlet you can go ahead and take this with you so maybe even at the park on top of that uh, it's very useful it's a very specialized device uh, specifically for nabemono which is japanese style hot pot and uh, tr traditionally um, in japan um, and even here when i was growing up we would do hot pot at the table one of the benefits of doing that is that you can have the food piping hot and eat it right away as opposed to cooking it on the stove and then transferring it it's a lot more of a hassle to do that you might risk burning yourself you also might risk uh, spilling it so once you have this thing at your table all you got to do is cook it and with nabemono as you may know you eat out of the hot pot and uh, you refill it with additional dashi or vegetables or meat uh, or whatever it is that you like to put in there continuous uh, eating and that's one of the benefits of using one of these electric skillets at the table. Now you guys know, I guess, in terms of what it is that uh, this thing came with. It came with the instruction manual, which I lost, so I don't know where, where it went, but uh, chances are you may not read the instructions or you may not need them because this is pretty straightforward to use. All you gotta do is plug it into the wall and turn it on right here. So there's a setting from off, so when it's off, and then there's a setting that goes to high, which is up to 480 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's pretty hot. Depending on how much food that you put in here, it may take a little bit of time to warm up, We'll get to that in some of the uh, pros and cons. In terms of what it is that it comes with, it comes with the power cable, which is magnetic by the way. The uh, bottom piece, which is the uh, heating, it has the heating coil. So that's what that looks like right there. On the bottom, there's not too much going on. And then on the side, there is the uh, metal plug for the uh, cord. So this came with uh, two different pans. One is a shallow pan um, that's supposed to be used for steaks vegetables and other, I guess, things that may not necessarily splatter, like yakisoba perhaps, or okonomiyaki. Or if you want to do something more uh, Western, maybe pancakes. And then in addition, it came with a steamer. So this is very useful if you don't already have a steamer. Um, so you can steam your vegetables, just put a little bit of water in there in the bottom, turn up the heat, set this on top and set your vegetables and then cover it with the uh, lid. It's a great way to get more vegetables in your diet and do so without using any additional oil. And then this is the uh, deep pan. It's about three inches deep. So it's about as deep as my uh, weeknight uh, skillet, my all clad uh, stainless pan. This is good for soups and stews. And uh, it comes with also a glass lid so you can actually see what's going on inside the pot if you're super curious and you wanna see how your food is cooking along, how that's coming along. So it's very different from the Le Creuset cast iron, even enamel cast iron, which you cannot see through. At least I cannot see through this. Same thing with these stainless lids. Can't see through this. Oh, made a mess. I would prefer glass so that I can see through uh, and see how the food's doing. So anyways, that's a really quick summary of what you get when you buy this. And um, they do have a cheaper version, which does not get as hot. And I don't think it comes with, it doesn't come with two sets of the pans and it does not come with a steamer, so keep that in mind. But if you have a, if you have a smaller family uh, or you don't want something as large as this, maybe that's something that you can consider as well. So in terms of the uh, pros and cons, I have a bunch that I wanted to share with you. So I've got nine pros and nine cons for you guys. And then I also got a few tips that I'll share with you as well so that you can make this uh, device a success whenever you try to use it in your kitchen. So right at your dining table. So pros and cons, one, the first pro is that it's uh, well-designed. It was intended to be carried around 
and uh, it's very lightweight as a result. It's got handles here, so you can avoid touching anything hot on the pan, and then also on the bottom part, there's handles as well, in case you need to transport it while it's hot. So it comes with two different pans, which can be used for different things. It also comes with a steamer basket or a steamer platform, and then also this glass lid, so you can see what's going on inside. The second thing that is very is that it's very convenient. So like I mentioned, uh, the whole point of using one of these is so that you can cook at the table, things like nabe mono, which you're gonna be continuously adding things in and taking things out to eat so that's very important it's all about that experience there's nothing quite like it if you can't use one of the electric ones i suppose you could also buy a portable gas burner but uh, then you're dealing with flame so it's a little bit more dangerous in my opinion uh, to have an open flame at the table. So that's another alternative that you can consider if you don't want to get one of these. The third pro is that it's very versatile. You can cook virtually anything in here. So it's got a deep pan for soups and stews or nabe mono, hot pot, Japanese style hot pot. It's got a shallow pan for the uh, things like steak or fish, yakizakana for example, or okonomiyaki, things that aren't necessarily going to be splattering everywhere. The fourth thing is going to be that washing these things, the uh, skillets, and then also the steamer and the, the lid is very simple. One, it's non-stick so things don't get stuck on there and then it's also very lightweight so that's another pro in my book the fifth pro is that if for whatever reason you damage any of these uh, four items they are replaceable so you can order replacement pans or a steamer basket or a glass lid online the sixth pro is that if you get this one the deep dish can actually be used on the stove directly so this bottom uh, part can actually sustain the heat direct heat from the fire so you can use it in case for whatever reason you run out of your regular pots and pans on the stove. Seventh pro is that this cord is detachable. So I hate it when you have that experience where you know that some appliances you can detach cords and some are stuck onto them. I always prefer, especially if you're gonna be transporting something like this to and from your cabinet uh, or your kitchen area to your table that it doesn't have a cord dangling around from it. That way it's uh, much less likely for you to trip or like knock something over, for example, because you have a cord wagging around. So that's a pro in my book. And the eighth pro is that it's got a glass lid so you can actually see what is going on in here. Like what is going on? Or is the food done cooking or not? So. That's another pro in my book, and that comp that's different, or that contrasts with the stainless all clad that I have here, or the uh, cast iron enamel lids, which you cannot see, right? So if you'd like to take a peek at your food, you can do so with this lid. And then the last pro, number nine, is that uh, the size of this is pretty good. If you have a large family, or you're feeding a bunch of people for a party, for example, this will do a pretty good job in terms of uh, keeping everybody, uh, I guess, fed continuously. So. Those are my nine pros. Let me know what you think. If I missed any or not, uh, feel free to share in a comment below right now. So now let's get into some of the cons. Uh, one is that even though this is a deep dish, it's not deep enough. So things are still gonna splatter. So for example, if you're trying to uh, sear something or maybe saute something, uh, even though these are somewhat deep, the oil still splatters. So you may either wanna make sure that you're using a lid or get a splatter guard. So that's one of the cons. The second con is that uh, because you're gonna be using this away from your kitchen area, chances are wherever it is that you have a ventilation uh, hood, uh, it's gonna make your house uh, smell probably delicious, but at the same time, it's gonna make uh, wherever it is, if you're using it in your table or your dining area all the time, it may cause the uh, oil to accumulate, accumulate on your ceiling. In addition, if you're in a small enclosed space, like a studio, for example, all of that heat that is generated from this is going to really add up because usually when you're cooking at, a, at the stove, the ventilation is taking away some of that heat. But uh, in this case, there is no ventilation unless you're outside or you have a fan or whatever. So it may make you pretty hot and you might get hot and sweaty. So that's another con. The third con is that it's non-stick. I don't like non-stick and that's one of the reasons why I switched to stainless steel a few years ago um, because you tend to uh, damage the non-stick surface over time. So eventually things will start sticking to it. Plus they use a chemical coating on it, which you may be ingesting. And uh, I prefer not to do that when possible. So that's a con in my book, that it's a uh, non-stick. Next con is that uh, it is electric. So if you don't have a outlet near your table or wherever it is that you're using it, you're gonna have to use an extension cord like I showed you at the beginning. Basically this cord is only about six feet long. So if you're further than that from an outlet, you're gonna need an extension cord. Another con is that uh, even though Zojirushi says that these pans are flat, they're actually not. 
And uh, it's pretty obvious if you do cook anything that's round in here, they're gonna slide to the edges. Uh, or anything like a liquid, if you pour it in initially, it's not gonna stay in the middle or the center, it's gonna actually go out to the sides, so it's not flat. Which may or may not matter depending on what it is that you're trying to cook. You've also got to uh, hand wash these four things because they're not dishwasher safe. So I would love to throw these things in the dishwasher even though they would take up a lot of space in there. Um, that's something that you should keep in mind. I guess all of the other cookware that I use is not necessarily dishwasher safe, but I could throw in the stainless and maybe the enamel, but uh, this stuff is not supposed to go in there. So you gotta hand wash it. So that's another con. And then this does actually take up a pretty good amount of space. So as you can see here, this is, I don't know, maybe 16 inches wide in diameter. So even though these things stack on top of each other like this, it still takes up quite a bit of space in my cabinet. So it's pretty wide and it's pretty tall. It's another con. And another con is that it's a very specialized device and for uh, all kinds of foods, but specifically I bought this for nabe mono, like I mentioned, so that I could cook at the table. So if that's not something that you necessarily plan to do, this may not be a good device for you to uh, invest in. So even though uh, I bought it for nabe mono, you can also use it for other Japanese foods like okonomiyaki, which is like a savory uh, Japanese pancake. You could also do yakisoba, which is stir-fried noodles. Uh, yaki udon, which is stir-fried udon noodles. You could do yaki onigiri. You could also do some vegetables. You can steam stuff. So a lot of things. I guess that's more of a pro, but the con was that it's a specialized device. And then the last con that I had is that if you're somewhat impatient, like I can be sometimes, uh, I admit it, it does take a little bit of time to heat up, especially if you're gonna fill this thing to the max. The first time when I had people over and we were using this, this thing was basically filled to the uh, brim. It took a few minutes before it started to really uh, boil, even with the lid on. So keep that in mind, you're gonna wanna preheat this uh, earlier than you think if you're gonna be filling it all the way to the top. So those are my uh, cons, nine of them. Let me know what you think. If they uh, were of concern to you, let me know in the comments. And uh, if you don't think it's a big deal, let me know as well. For me, it wasn't a big deal and that's why I bought this. A few tips that I have for you guys, I guess in terms of using this is uh, one, try to be careful, especially if you're gonna be taking food in and out. There are some spaces here where the food can fly in to these crevices and make a mess. So I've had to go around the rim with a sponge and clean out that food that got in there. So that's one thing. Second thing is, like I mentioned, this is non-stick, so you don't wanna be using any kind of metal or sharp utensils because you're gonna damage the surface. So if you have uh, wood or silicone uh, spatulas and utensils, um, or even bamboo, um, just be gentle when you're putting stuff in, in here and mixing it around or whatever. And hopefully your nonstick will uh, last you a pretty good amount of time. And the third thing is to never leave this without any kind of food on it, because as you may know, if you have a nonstick pan and you just leave it on the stove, uh, it may start to smoke. Same thing would happen with this. So make sure that you always put food on here before you turn it on. And there isn't really any kind of an audible noise when this thing is on. So just like electric cars are dangerous, the electric skillets are dangerous too, because when you have the stove on, at least you can hear the gas going tss, or the if you have a really if you have a really strong burner. But for this, the skillet is silent. You might hear some uh, cracking or crackling. The uh, metal is you know expanding due to the heat. But uh, aside from that, you might not know that it's on uh, when it's on and you could burn yourself potentially. So I've done that a couple times because I don't know, for whatever reason, I think when I moved this, I accidentally left the switch over here on high. And so I didn't realize that it was on and it was hot and I didn't uh, know until I got my hand close to it. And I was like, whoa, that was kind of hot. So you might want to be mindful of that uh, so you don't burn yourself. So that's another tip. Another tip that I have, have for you is uh, if you have a, maybe if you live in like an older house where the circuits are not necessarily up to date, they can't handle a lot of uh, voltage or power going through them. So if you have a bunch of high power using devices, you might want to put this into a dedicated socket so it doesn't trip your circuit breaker. You know, that was what issue at uh, a place that I used to live in, in San Francisco, is that uh, the circuit breaker would trip whenever we used a electric skillet. So what do you think? Were my pros and cons anything of concern to you? Or are you more likely to purchase this now that you have heard about it? Um, I use this quite frequently, as you've seen some of my live trainings where I have some food in there for you. And um, question of the day, so 
Is this electric skillet something that you were looking for? Does it meet your needs? And if not, uh, what is it that's missing? Uh, feel free to let me know in the comments below and uh, let me know what it is that you were looking at instead. So for me, this was the best thing at the market at the time. I did my research, reading the reviews, seeing what the features were and the other comp competing products. And that's why I ended up uh, choosing this as a uh, mini investment. So. I would love to hear your thoughts. Let me know if you enjoyed this video as well. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one and specifically about plant-based Japanese food. Leave any comments or questions below if you have them. And I think I'll see you guys in my next video. Oh yeah, and anything else that I forgot to say, I will leave in the description below as well as the links to the product as well as the blog post, which will have all the details for you guys. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Kyotsuke ne. Take care. Bye-bye. So some of the tips that I have for you for using this device, uh, one is to use it at the table. No, that was not the first tip.